Welcome to this module, Legislation. So what are the objectives of this module? Well, with the introduction of the Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order 2005, known as the RRFSO in October 2006, fire and rescue authorities and other bodies known as enforcing authorities have a duty to enforce fire safety in non-domestic premises. Now, most of the requirements of the RRFSO will not be new as many are similar to the Fire Precautions Workplace Regulations 1997, but they are applicable to a far larger range of premises, for example, all non-domestic premises including common parts of houses in multiple occupation known as, as HMOs, and those premises used by the self-employed including family-run businesses and the voluntary sector. Now, provision is made for the protection of a wide range of persons under the RRFSO than the 1997 regulations. Now, experience has shown that enforcement activity and uniformity of approach varies across different authorities. Different fire officers are approaching the, the, the legislation differently. And that guidance on the intent of the RRFSO may help increase consistency. That's the aim of the module, really, to give you the guidance and explain what the intent is so that we get all the fire authorities enforcing it in the same way. And that's what this is about. So what are the aims and outcomes of this presentation? Well, at the end of this presentation, you should be able to state the primary fire safety legislation applicable in the UK, where it applies and the structure of the legislative document, and understand the ethos behind the document. You should be able to explain the meaning of the terms responsible person, relevant person and general fire precautions. You should know the duties of the responsible person in complying with the current legislation. And finally, state the fire authorities and inspectors' powers under the current legislation. They are the aims and outcomes of this presentation. The RRFSO. Now, the legislation covering fire safety in England and Wales at the moment is the Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order 2005, which again came into force on the 1st of October 2006. Now, the two main pieces of legislation that the RRFSO repealed and replaced are, you've got the Fire Precautions Act 1971 and the Fire Precautions Workplace Regulations 1997 as amended. Now, the Fire Precautions Act 1971 could only be enforced anyway in hotels, boarding houses and places of work that needed a fire certificate. And the Fire Precautions Workplace Regulations applied to places where persons were employed. And therefore, there were loopholes in these regulations too. That's why the RRFSO was brought in. Take away these loopholes. So how is the RRFSO applied? Well, it applies to any premises. That's the key. It's just about any premises. Now, there are a few exceptions, which I'll cover later, but generally apply all. Now, the regime introduced is based on a risk assessment. So everything's based on risk, and it relies heavily on self-compliance. Not to say there's a fire officer, give me a fire certificate, I'm covered. Self-compliance. The responsible person's responsible. Now, the fire service used to, like I say, issue fire certificates and people thought they were safe. They used to get a fire certificate, I'm covered, put it in a safe, lock it away. They never complied with it. They never made sure they tested things and maintained the means of escape, etc. That was a legal document. They thought they were covered by having a fire certificate. It was like having just a piece of paper. No, not adequate, and that's why the RFSO brings out. Now, employers are under a personal duty personal duty to comply with these regulations and the responsibility for compliance rests with the responsible person, whoever that may be. And again, I'm going to go into more detail who the responsible person is shortly. Now, everything initially hinges on management recognising their responsibilities and carrying out a suitable and sufficient fire risk assessment and taking appropriate measures to reduce or remove the risk without waiting to be told so by the fire brigade. Don't wait till we turn up there and see you need to unblock that exit and remove that thing. You do it now. Don't wait for the fire brigade to turn up. You must do it now. In almost all premises, the enforcing authority for the RRFSO is your local fire authority. There are exceptions again, and I'll cover it, but there are other parties, but generally it is the authority, the local fire authority that enforce the RRFSO. So, who else enforces the RRFSO then? Well, firstly, you've got the Health and Safety Executive. 
The HSE enforcer regulations in premises such as chemical processing plants, oil refineries, nuclear installations and power plants.